When thinking about radiometric dating, many people immediately think of radiocarbon. Geologists don't use radiocarbon dating very much, they usually use other methods, but radiocarbon illustrates the principle, and although it's very unreliable, it's far more reliable than methods like uranium lead, which geologists usually use. Radiocarbon dating, often shortened to C14 dating, was introduced by Professor Willard Libby in 1961. The method assumes that the level of carbon-14, which is radioactive, has been constant for longer than the age of anything to be dated. So any plant or animal remains must have had the present equilibrium amount of carbon-14 in it when it died. Since then, it's been decaying away with a half-life of 5,730 years. So, the longer ago something died, the less C14 remains. Libby wrote a book, Radiocarbon Dating. On page 7, if I remember correctly, he pointed out that the current level of carbon-14 in the atmosphere has not reached the equilibrium level. That wipes out the method before we begin. At current carbon-14 creation levels, equilibrium should have been reached in 60,000 years. There's still only enough to account for about 20,000. What was even more interesting, he wrote a paper for one of the top journals, Science. In that paper he wrote, The research in the development of the dating technique consisted of two stages dating of samples from the historic and prehistoric epochs, respectively. Arnold and I had our first shock when our advisors informed us that history extended back only 5,000 years. You read statements to the effect that such and such a society or archaeological site is 20,000 years old. We learned, rather, that these numbers, these ancient ages, are not known accurately. In fact, the earliest historical date that has been established with any degree of certainty is about the time of the first dynasty of Egypt. It very quickly became apparent that the method was flawed. Dates from pieces of shell broken from living snails indicated that they had died 27,000 years ago. And even more shocking for the establishment, Coal and petroleum oil dated at only 10,000 years. Then it was found that plants can exclude C14 if they're not growing too quickly. This is officially called carbon isotope fractionation in respiration. C14 is radioactive. It causes damage. And excluding as much as possible is a sensible thing for plants to do. But even plants which are good at excluding C14 have to drop their guard when they're growing quickly. So no one ever knows how much carbon-14 plant remains originally contained. And animals had different intake of carbon-14 depending on what they ate. The C14 dating method was obviously very questionable. But... They found that samples from historically known ages of one sample type, from one particular area, contained C14 remnants which could be correlated to their known age by using fiddle factors. So catalogues of particular samples in particular areas were compiled, and when a similar sample from that same area was found, they could look up the correction factors which should give a meaningful age. So, radiocarbon labs have two types of dates. For well-known specimens from well-known areas, they can look in their catalogue and get correction factors which hopefully give a reasonable result. These dates are called corrected dates. Material in which does not come from a well-known type in a well-known area are just given the ages which come from the undoctored calculations. These are called uncorrected dates. So, how reliable are the uncorrected dates? And how would you ever know how accurate they are 
unless you already know the real age. A few years ago, we had a good test case. A schoolboy called Richard Henwood found a piece of rock with the Bushman painting on it. He took it to the museum at Peter Maritzburg in South Africa. Dr. Aaron Maisel was overjoyed at this find. He sent it to Oxford University's radiocarbon unit. They dated it at 1,200 years, and this unique archaeological find was published in the local newspaper. This led to Mrs. Joan Aron seeing and recognising her painting. She'd painted it 11 years earlier. It had been stolen, vandalised, and found by the nine-year-old schoolboy three years later. Well, dating an 11-year-old painting as 1,200 years old doesn't suggest that carbon-14 dating is very accurate. The true age is about 0.9% of the carbon-14 age. But remember what Sir Robert Gentry said in the Louisiana State University Conference. He estimated the ages of the entire stratigraphic column would be less than 0.01% of the values found in the literature. And if it's true that those ages are given by radiometric dating, then geological dates may be about a hundred times less reliable than carbon-14 dates. Let's have a look at that next time. Thank you for joining me for this episode. If you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe and press the bell so that you'll be notified as I release new movies. If you'd like to support this project, you're welcome to do so through Patreon. Find a link on my channel banner and in the description below.